talk a lot more about sound design later on in post-production, but when you're doing your picture edit, you're gonna do a lot of initial sound design work along with music editing, and this is normal. Remember we talked about an editor and how they cut with production on a movie, and then when production wraps, the director comes in and they watch a take. Well, a rough cut of the film would never work without initial sound design and music editing. So we're just gonna take a basic look at it here with the gold and just see how I did things on the edit page for sound design. Let's take a look. Before we get into audio editing, let me cover a couple things that I don't think I've shown you yet. So here's the timeline we've been working with, and I wanna show you how to add tracks. It's very straightforward. If I wanna add a video track for any reason, just right click up here, add track, and there we go. If I wanna add an audio track, I control click or right click down here in the audio section and go to add track, but then I can choose mono, stereo. Let's just choose, let's choose mono. And this 1.0 signifies mono. Now let's say, oh man, I meant to change it to stereo. I don't have to delete the track. I could right click and delete the track, or I can just right click, change track type to stereo. And then 2.0 signifies stereo. You get it. You can have as many tracks as you want, which going back to what I showed you earlier under workspace, dual screen, and then full screen timeline, if you get a lot of audio tracks built up, it's nice to have some room to work with them. So here's my timeline for the gold project we've seen over and over now. And this is the audio that I added to complete this edit. I did all of this on the edit page. I didn't go to the Fairlight page, which is where we'll do all of our actual sound design later on in that course. But as I said, I'm doing most of my initial audio work on the edit page. Now you'll see different colors here. This is a color scheme that I use. You can come up with your own colors for audio. I have a friend who works on studio films as an editor and they used a certain color scheme that he told me that I just, it was a little too general for me. So I just came up with my own system and if you just do that and be consistent, that helps you stay organized. So let me start at the top. Oh, and by the way, to set colors, just right click on a track, go to change track color. Okay, I always have my dialogue up here in green. That's left over from the Avid Media Composer days. And next, I have effects in orange. And these are all mono effects. Remember, 1.0 is mono. And then we come down below my mono effects. And 2.0 means stereo. And I have some stereo effects. Let me see what this is. If, if you want to see what something is, you can solo the track. Solo, solos the track. M mutes the track. So I wanna solo this, and I'm gonna put my playhead there and just zoom in a little bit. Let's see what this is. Okay, it was a crow. And that crow, that file was a stereo file, so I wanted that effect to be on a stereo track. We'll talk more about that in a second. So let me take that solo off, zoom back out. And then below that we have music in pink and then any ambience in purple. Now, obviously, on something like Reckoning, I'm going to have more audio tracks than this because I might need more than just two tracks for my mono effects or stereo effects, etc. So every project you do, every film's going to be a little different depending on what it is, a romantic comedy versus an action movie or a thriller, etc. So now, how do you get audio on these various tracks? Well, let's take a look. So I'm going to go sound, and here's just some different library sounds I've brought in. Let's go to Horses and... Let's play one of these. Yikes. How about this one? Okay, so let's say I had a horse in the scene and I wanted that. I could set my in and out points. In working with audio files, it's tempting to click on this and want to drag it, but you actually do it up here. Okay, so I've got in and outs, and now I can click and drag that to exactly where I want it to be, okay? And you'll see it change color based on where I am. Another way you could do that, I could position my playhead and uncheck A1 and check A4 if I wanted to put it there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this. And then overwrite. I didn't want to insert because I'd ripple everything down the timeline. In fact, let me just do that. If I insert, see, it pushes everything down. So in this scenario, when I'm placing sound, I'm very rarely ever doing an insert. I'm typically doing an overwrite. And then Three-point edits apply just like we looked at before. So if I wanted to, for example, put some background ambience in, I could set my in and out on the timeline and then just put an in here at the source and fill that area. So it's very straightforward. You can just drag it to the right spot. You can move it around or you can use your other tools. Now let's go back to mono versus stereo. How do you know if something is stereo? 
Music is always stereo, typically, but some effects are just mono. Let's look at a couple ways to identify these. First off, let me go over to my blank timeline. And here I only have two audio tracks, right? Well, I'm gonna grab this horse track and just drag it down below and it's gonna create a new track since I'm dragging it below my existing audio tracks. And I'm gonna put it over here and see how Resolve created a stereo track? That means this is a stereo file. Resolve will automatically intelligently create the type of track it needs if the track doesn't exist. So I'm gonna do that. Let me find something that's mono. Okay, so there, you see, it created a mono track for this. So you get it. So that's one way to tell, but that's kind of cumbersome, especially if you're in a project with a ton of tracks already, that's not the easy way to do it. Another way, if I control click on the clip and say reveal in Finder, here's the clip in Finder. And if I control click again and choose get info, and this is gonna be a little different on Windows, but on Mac, I can see the information here and it's gonna tell me if it's stereo or mono right there. That's another way to check. And then a third way to check if you go to the media page, and I'm gonna double click on one of my sound library sounds. And by the way, if it doesn't show up here, for example, let me see if I double click, it doesn't change this, it only changes over here. It's because I have waveform over here, so it's gonna show me the waveforms that I'm double clicking on. If I change that to meters, it's gonna update over here, see? And also, if you only see a black screen, if you hit this down arrow, you can change that to audio track. And there you go. So, here's our main, that's our main navigation, and then here are the two parts to this file. So if you see two tracks in an audio file, that will often mean stereo. It doesn't necessarily mean stereo. You can, as you've seen with your field recorder, you can record two mono tracks and it'll spit it out as a stereo file, but it's not really stereo. So a way to tell if it's stereo or not is to look at those tracks and see if they're any different. And sure enough, look, See where that's peaking right here? If I go straight up, it's not the same waveform. So that means this is stereo. And you'll definitely hear it. Now, with that, if I go back to the edit page and I take this stereo file, let's mark an in and an out, and I drag it down to a mono track. Well, it's not gonna change the track because I already specified this as a mono track. So now if I play this on solo, it's not gonna sound right. It's being forced to play mono. But if I drag this down to stereo and then play it, it's gonna to sound totally different. So be mindful of that. And of course, that's yet another way, I didn't think about that, but that's another way to test mono versus stereo is just drag it to a different track. Mono will still sound like mono on a stereo track. Cool. Now, another little side tip here. If you're moving from track to track, Obviously, it's easy to you know, move it this way as well. But let's say you have it placed exactly, but you just wanna go straight up or straight down. If you hold shift when you're dragging it, it will kind of stick in place. Not that you can't move it. Well, actually, no, it's not letting me move it at all. So holding shift down will keep it right where it's supposed to be and just let it go up or down. So I'm gonna remove that, unsolo this. Now, another thing you're gonna use a lot on the edit page when you're doing your audio is adjusting the volume. And there's different ways to do this. So first off, if I go to my mixer up here on the top right, and it's just showing meters right now, I wanna see my other controls. So I'm gonna hit the three dots and go to mixer. There we go. So I can scroll back and forth on this. And obviously, as we saw before, when we go to workspace, dual screen, I can see all of those tools on my laptop display and not have to scroll, so that's nice. But for now, let's say I wanted to go to my music track, which is A6, and adjust the volume of the entire track. I could do that with this slider. Typically, you're not going to be adjusting your tracks with the faders like this because all of your sounds are unique. They come in at different volumes or they need to be different volumes for your film. However, one instance where you might be doing that just for an initial adjustment is your music track because all music comes in really hot. It's really loud. And so I'm always taking the volume down on the music. But just so you know, that's there. That's your mixer. I'm gonna get rid of that. The way I'm typically adjusting volume is clip by clip on my effects. So if I zoom in here and solo this, so what is this? It says clothing movement. I needed some clothing movement to make that feel real. So I can make this track a little larger by clicking and dragging like that. If I move my cursor till I get this double arrow, 
I can adjust the volume up and down. And it'll tell me what dB I'm going to, right? Let me undo that. Now a more precise way to do this is to select the clip and then go to Inspector. See in Inspector, I can adjust the volume and know exactly what I'm going to and even type it in here as opposed to dragging the slider, which I like this better. So that's what I'm gonna do clip by clip by clip until I get volumes correct. And you can do other things in here like panning it, etc., which we'll get in all, into all that later. But one other thing that you're gonna use a lot on the edit page before you get to the sound design stage is what's called rubber banding. Is a term I've used to describe it before, but it's basically adjusting the audio at various levels on the same clip. So instead of adjusting the whole clip together, I might say, well, at the beginning of it, I need it to be softer, but I need it loud here and then soft again. So the way you would do that, let me just make a copy of this clip. If I hold Option down, and with the double arrows click on the volume adjuster, I can add edit points. So let's say I wanted this area to be louder or more quiet. I can put edit points on either side, then put one in the center and then drag that up or down. And that's very nice. If you click and drag it back and forth, you can make that adjustment. And then if you wanna delete any of these, just click on them so they're red and hit the delete key on the keyboard. So rubber banding or whatever term you wanna use is very, very valuable. You can see I've done it here. Well, let me zoom in on the timeline. And this is soloed, what's going on here? Okay, the character's running away. So I probably wanted to drop the volume a little bit to match that. So you're gonna do a lot of that stuff as you're laying in your rough audio before you get to the sound design stage. So that's a basic overview of audio editing. Again, come up with your own color scheme get a pattern that you use film to film. Remember to have stereo clips on stereo tracks. And then remember you can use Inspector to do fine adjustments on things like your volume. And then Option and clicking along the volume line lets you rubber band and adjust specific parts, okay? And one other note, if you're bringing in any audio that for any reasons tied to video, when you insert it in, it's gonna want to add that video here and that's typically not what you want. So to keep that from happening, you can just deselect your video track. So for example, let me pull up something that has, so this has audio. Let's say I wanted the sound of the goat or whatever. If I did an in and an out and brought that down, so it's gonna wanna put the video in with the audio and I don't want that. So what I would do is click and take this red box off of video and now I can't see my source clip. So that's because Inspector's open, so I'm just gonna click that. Now if I drag that down, see it's only bringing in the audio. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna show you a little more in a lesson coming up. But know this, on a feature film, when you have separate departments, the sound designers will take what the editorial department did, what the editor did with sound and music, and they will make all that legal, they'll sweeten it, they'll make it, they'll bring it up to the standard it needs to be. Hey, and listen, if you like this training, and you're an aspiring filmmaker, check out my online film school, writedirect.co. Write and direct. The goal of my school is to help you sidestep the minefields that claim the dreams of so many other filmmakers. What do I mean by that? Well, look at me. I did the traditional thing. I went to Los Angeles, went to film school, and yeah, I learned a lot, but I spent a lot of money. And if you want to direct movies, when you graduate from film school, there's kind of only one way forward. And what is that? to begin directing movies, but it's on your dime. Your education will not land you a job as a director. So if you spend all your money on your education, you can see you're in, a, you're in a tough spot. Write and Direct teaches you how to make a movie from beginning to end. We begin in development with story and we go in granular steps all the way through post-production. You learn how to do it all so that you're empowered to pursue your dreams. WriteDirect.co, I hope to see you there. And if not there, I'll see you here on the channel very soon.